right, welcome back everybody. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about unit testing with the Azure SDK. Now, in general, this isn't that much different than regular unit testing. And this video is not gonna go over, you know, unit testing as a whole or intro to unit testing or anything like that. I just wanna look at a couple examples of things that are a little bit different with the Azure SDK and how you go about testing these uh, services or these packages in your code. So for example, the Azure SDK offers all kinds of libraries, um, or in the case of .NET, NuGet packages. So if we scroll through here, you can just see that there's a ton of different packages to interact with different Azure services, such as blob storage or service bus and things like that. So we're gonna look at a little sample app that is talking to blob storage and use that as an example of how to understand a few considerations when trying to unit test. So over in the browser, um, I have this app for our blob manager, and that's also open in VS Code here, and right now it's not running. So I'm just gonna start this up real quick, um, just so we can see how this app behaves. And it looks like I have to add the project flag there. So that'll be our blob manager API project. And once that's running, we can go out to our Swagger UI page. Swagger just provides a nice little built-in interface to test our endpoints. So right now this API has two methods. One is an upload function, and one is a method to get all of the untagged uh, blobs in our container up in Azure. So you can add tags to blobs to kind of give them sort of like metadata or additional descriptions to help you find them and organize them. But this is essentially just a little web service with a couple utility methods for us to play around with. So for example, if I was to click this upload method, uh, this will let us pick a file, and then we can upload it to Azure. And this is actually gonna perform a little bit of processing on this file. So a lot of times when you receive a file from the user before you upload it to your server or your cloud services, you wanna do a little bit of file cleanup on it. So right now this is all caps, uh, but by the time it goes up to Azure, it'll be converted to lowercase. Um, if we switch over to our Azure blob storage service, so I have this running up in Azure, you can see our file did come up to this container, and this is living inside of a products container right now. So if we were to look at our overall uh, blob storage, or overall storage account here, um, you can see that's just under containers here, and we have a products container where we can upload files or images or what have you. Um, so if we go back to our Swagger UI page, um, let's scroll down to our other method, which is called get untagged. And so we run this, this will return all of the blobs in that same container that aren't tagged. So if we scroll down here, we can see that the uh, tags on this object are null. And so this is just a utility method that returns all untagged blobs. Maybe you want to make sure that all of your blobs do have a tag on them. And this is an easy way to find the ones that don't. So let's see what these methods look like over in our sample app. So right now this project has actually two projects. There's our main API project, and then there's our tests project. And we're gonna be using XUnit for this, which is a popular library for .NET. And most of the concepts here apply to the other languages as well, at least the specific ones we'll be talking about. Uh, so even though the code will be a little bit different, the principles will be the same. So in our API project, um, inside of our program.cs is where everything is initially set up. So Azure, uh, the Azure SDK exposes this extension method called add Azure clients. And this is where we register different types of service clients. So here, since we're working with blob storage, we would say add blob service client. And then in this case, we're passing in a connection string. Um, you could also use Azure identity or some other slightly more secure options. Um, remember, connection strings always have that risk that if someone gets this string or it's shared improperly, they'll also be able to access your account. So for a real app, you might want to look at a little bit more secure options than this, but this works fine for a demo. So what this does is registers our blob service client for dependency injection throughout our app. And this is the first of two key concepts that we want to talk about with unit testing. So every Azure SDK library or every service out in Azure, essentially. Um, when you add a package for that service, it exposes something called a service client. 
And a service client is sort of the main class that interacts with that Azure service. So for Blob Service, we have a Blob Service client, uh, but for Key Vault, you, you would have like a secrets client, and then other services have their own clients as well. But we're gonna work with a Blob Service client since Blob Storage is one of the most common services. So then over in our app, we also have uh, two methods down here that we looked at in Swagger UI. So here's our upload, and here's our get untagged method. And so the first one uses this blob utility service, which is a custom class we'll look at in a moment. And that uploads the file. And then the blob utility service also has this get untagged blob async uh, method. So let's look at that utility service. And this is where the Azure SDK is really being used. So you can see we have our blob service client being injected into the constructor of this utility service. Remember, that corresponds to the blob service client that we registered in our program file. So that'll get injected here, and then we can use it throughout this service and its methods. So first we have this upload as blob, and we actually go out and get a container client. So remember, you can have different containers, which are kind of like folders in blob storage. So we're going out and getting that products container that we want to upload to, and that also has its own client. So we have a container client, which is sort of like a, a sub client almost of the blob service client, which is higher level. And this is where we perform our custom logic. Um, this method is really simple. We're just converting everything to lowercase to make sure there's no files up in Azure that are all uppercase. But in a real app, you'd probably do some additional processing here, um, either security checks or naming conventions or adding tags or dates or something like that. But I want to keep this simple for our testing. And then here is where we actually call the Azure SDK method to upload the blob to Azure. And you can see that we upload it with the clean name rather than the original name of the file. Um, so we just put the contents of the stream um, and upload that as well. So this is kind of the key method that uploads it to Azure with our clean name. And the second method, the get tagged blobs, or sorry, get untagged blobs async, this uh, powers our second API method. This again gets the container client for the products uh, container. And then we actually go out to Azure and we get all of the blobs in that container. And we say that we want to include the tags with them. So this has some different parameters for what data we uh, get back from that request. And then we loop through those. And if any of them have null tags, then we add them to this response object or this uh, list of blob items that we're returning from the method. So down here, it returns all of the untagged blobs. So we want to write unit tests for these two methods. And remember, when we write unit tests, we don't want to test the Azure SDK code itself. We only want to test our custom logic. Remember, unit tests are supposed to be very granular and only test specific things. And we don't want to test those external dependencies because those should have you know tests of their own. So essentially, for this first method, we want to test that this clean logic applies. And on the second test, we want to make sure that this loop is working correctly and filtering properly. But we don't want to test these client objects themselves. And that means we're going to have to rely on mocks. So we want to substitute these uh, service clients with our own mocks to make sure that they're just kind of dummy objects and we're not relying on them to succeed for the test check to succeed. So if we go down into our test project, I have two tests set up for us. We'll look at these one at a time. So the, so the first important concept to keep in mind when unit testing the Azure SDK is that you want to replace those service clients. You want to create mocks of them. And in this case, I'm using the C Sharp library called mock to create those. So it's M-O-Q. So you can see we're using mock up here, which you can install just as a NuGet package. And so we want to create a mock for our blob service client and for that more specific container client. So the first thing we do is we set up a, um, or we mock out the method of get blob container client. So whenever we ask for a container client for products, it returns the mock container client instead of a real one. And then on that container client, we then mock out the upload blob async method and so we just say, in this case, uh, whatever parameters we decide to pass through, uh, just make sure that you return 
a response of blob content info. So regardless of what we pass in, just give us data back. Remember, we don't want to test this method itself. We just want to stub it out so that it'll work well enough to test our code. These tests are all following the arrange act assert pattern. So here is where we're kind of setting up our test. And then here's where we'll actually run it. And then here's where we check that it ran how we wanted it to. So the last part of this arrange or setup is um, stubbing out this file to upload. <clears throat> and then we create a new instance of our blob utility service, which remember is our custom class that we actually do want to test. But we pass in a mock service client instead of a real service client. So up here in our utility method, dependency injection would normally supply the real service client, but we're just supplying a mock service client. And this is why uh, dependency injection is so important for unit testing because we can literally just swap out the real implementation with our own mock implementation. And now these fake methods will be called instead of the real methods, which would actually try to go out to Azure. And that's not what we want. We don't want to test those kinds of dependencies. So in the act section of our unit test, we then call upload as blob. And then we want to verify that upload blob async was called with a file that was all lowercase. So if you'll notice up here, we're reading in a file from our project so that we have this sample.txt file that's just a dummy file over here. But you'll notice that it's all capitalized in the file name. Whereas in our test, we want to verify that when it actually gets uploaded to Azure, it was converted to all lowercase. And by using these mocks, what we're ensuring is that this is essentially the only part of our unit test that, um, or this is the only part of our method that we're testing, because this will be a dummy and this will be a dummy object as well. And we're just testing that this works properly. So that's what this verify method does, which is also provided by the mock library. So for this first test, the important takeaway is just to remember to mock out your service clients and design your classes in a way where you can inject them and replace uh, the real instances. That will remove that dependency on Azure and prevent your unit tests from making real calls. Now for our second test, we still keep those same concepts. So you can see we're still mocking out the blob service client and the container client. But there's another concept up here that we want to demonstrate or look at as well. So when working with Azure unit testing, there's this concept of input models and output models. And input models are essentially the classes or models that you insert into the Azure SDK methods as parameters. So for example, if you're uploading a file, uh, the file might be the input model. And then the output model is what the method returns back to you. And for the most part, this is pretty straightforward, but there are cases where the SDK clients will return models that you can't create yourself, which means you can't mock them out very easily. And in those cases, the SDK actually provides a factory class to create them. So for example, we want to be able to return a pageable set. So down here where we're saying get blobs async, remember this is a method on the SDK that we want to stub out. But in order to do that, we have to have it return um, a set of blob item pages. And so up here, we're mocking out a pageable uh, set of blob items. And this blob item actually doesn't have a public constructor. So if we go down into this, uh, you can't actually just create an instance of this because the class won't let you do that. So instead, you have to use a factory that's provided by the SDK. And this model factory, this is the key term. So most classes in the SDK, um, if you're not able to just create an instance of that class itself, so if we can't create um, an instance of a blob item, it will provide a matching factory to do that for us. So here we're saying blobs model factory dot blob item. And this is what will actually create the object that we need. For example, if I was to just say, new blob item. Um, it won't let us do this. So you can see uh, here it says blob item does not contain a constructor that takes zero arguments. And even if I say, you know, hello, or I try to do something to actually create an instance here, um, it's not going to let me do that. I just can't create this item. So instead, I have to use this factory, which can create it. 
and then we pass in our parameters into this method and it will return a blob item. So first we just create a page. So whenever a service returns multiple items or like a large set of data, it usually uses a pageable. And so first we just create one page using our model factory. And then we can use this from pages helper method as well to turn that into a pageable object. So essentially this whole block of code right here just creates a pageable set of blob items using that model factory for any item that we can't create ourselves. The SDK will provide a factory like this. Then on our service clients that we're stubbing out, then we just take that pageable item um, or pageable blob item and set that as the return data. So that will essentially mock out a call to blob storage. And so instead of actually going out to blob storage and getting all our files, it'll just return this uh, stubbed out set of data here. And then we can just test our logic on that rather than testing the SDK. So again, we just create an instance of our utility service finally, and then we call that get untagged blobs async method. But remember we passed in the mock uh, client services that will give us the mocked responses back. And so this is going to test that the uh, number of untagged blobs was one and that the untagged blob name was set to world. So in our uh, mock data here, we have one blob item that is tagged and one that isn't. So we should get one back and one shouldn't be returned. And this should line up with the data that isn't tagged. So let's actually run these and make sure that they're working as expected. So I'll just stop our application. And if I say .NET test, let's see what this gives us. And sure enough, there we have two passed tests. So it looks like everything's working, but we can actually test that for sure or verify that this is working as expected by going back and modifying our methods. Remember, part of the point of unit tests is that if we make breaking changes in our code or we change kind of the core functionality of these methods, that that should show up in our unit tests and create a failed test that we should investigate. So for example, if I were to delete this line of code that converts the file name to lowercase, and I just change this to file.name. So say another developer didn't like this or wasn't aware of the purpose of this, and so they came in and just modified this method to no longer set things to lowercase. And then they came in here, and instead of returning the untagged blobs, maybe they just you know changed this so that it loops through them and adds them to a list and returns them, and it ignores the check for the untagged blobs. Well, now if we run this, we should get two failed tests because these will no longer behave in a way that satisfies our tests. And we can see that here. We now have two failed tests uh, because, for example, expected invocation was once, but it was actually zero times because it was never called with lowercase sample text. So our tests are definitely working and they verify that any breaking changes will uh, cause errors and we're setting and we're running all this using our mocked service clients and our model factories so the key takeaways here remember to mock out your service clients and remember that if those service clients have methods that return like read-only objects or objects that are difficult to create the SDK will usually supply a model factory with a matching name that you can use to set that up and this is standard across the whole SDK for the most part. So even though we're using a blob service client here or blob storage, um, this should apply to the other Azure services. This should apply to the other Azure services as well, as long as you look out for those key concepts. So hopefully this was sort of a helpful tour of how to unit test the Azure SDK classes. Please hit subscribe to support the channel and I'll see you next and I'll see you next time here at the Code Wolf.